That is what we're doing with messages. Next is a brand new application, and that's voice memos, and it's gorgeous. This is what it looks like when you're recording a voice memo. You can use this to uh, record voice memos to yourself, to record lectures or interviews. It'll use the built-in microphone. You can also plug in an external microphone. Once you've recorded it, you can edit that by trimming the memo, and then you can share it, either by sending it over email or you can send it over MMS. So voice memos built in to the home screen with iPhone 3.0. Next, calendar. In iPhone 1.0, we supported personal calendars. So you could create appointments for yourself, meetings, and it's synchronized between your phone and your Mac or PC using iTunes. Last year, in iPhone 2.0, we added support for Exchange. And this was always up to date, because we synchronized over the air using ActiveSync. So your calendar was always up to date. And we actually allowed you to either view your personal calendars or your Exchange calendars, or you could combine them on one calendar application. This year, we're adding support for two additional calendar types. The first is CalDAV. So CalDAV is a calendaring standard that's supported by Yahoo, by Google, by Oracle, uh, by Mac OS X Server, and a lot of others. And it's great for shared calendars. So you could have like a, a shared family calendar where everyone in the family has access to it and sees the changes that anyone else makes. So CalDAV. And next is support for subscriptions. So this is the ICS format. It allows you to subscribe to things like your favorite sports team schedule, or you know, movie premieres, or national holidays. So some really nice additions to the calendar application. Next is stocks. We have some nice additions here to stocks. This is what our stocks application looks like today. We're adding support for news stories, headlines, right at the bottom of the application. We're also adding support for details right in here. So you see highs and lows, PEs, and even market cap right here in the app. We've also added a landscape view. So when you turn it to landscape, you get this nice big chart. If you put one finger down, you can see the stock price at that point in time. And if you put two fingers down, you can see the delta between those two points. So some nice additions to the stocks application. Next is search. Last year with iPhone 2.0, we added support for search into the contacts application. And our customers told us they love this, the ability to quickly search across all their contacts and find what they're looking for. Well, this year, we're adding search to all of our key applications, starting with mail. In iPhone 3.0, you'll be able to search messages from someone to someone, search subjects, and search all headers. In addition, if the message you're looking for isn't on your iPhone, you can continue that search on the server. Now, this is supported by Exchange 2007 and most IMAP servers. So it'll continue that search on the server, respond with all the results, and you can view those messages right on your iPhone. So search in mail. Next, we're also adding search in calendar. So you can search across the calendar for that appointment you're looking for. Also, search in iPod. Search for you know, all of your songs, but artist, album, song name. You can also search for all your music, videos, TV shows. And search in notes by the title of the note or the entire body of the note. So we're adding search to all of these applications. But we didn't stop there. We thought, wouldn't it be nice if there was a single location you could go to search across all of these applications. And that's exactly what we did. We created a new home screen where you can search across all of those applications, and we call it Spotlight. And so now to the left of the other home screens, there's a single location where you can search across your phone. You see at the bottom here, where we show what home screen you're on, there's a new icon on the left, which is for Spotlight. Let me go ahead and demo that for you now. So here we are uh, on our home screen. I'll just flick to the left, and that is Spotlight. Again, here's the home screen you're used to. Here is Spotlight. I'll go ahead and search for, let's say, Tim. T-I-M. Go ahead and say search. 
Now it's searched across the entire, you know, the phone. See the first couple results, those are contacts. So if I tap here on Tim Young, it takes me directly to that contact inside of the phone application. And from there you could dial him, you could send an email, you could go and look up uh, his location based on uh, here in Maps. Let me go back to the home screen. The next three items, New York Times, the Time Machine, and Times Square, those are all applications. If you're like me and you have well over 100 applications on your phone, this makes it really easy to find and launch an application quickly. I can just tap on, let's say, the Time Machine, launches that ebook application right there, and now I'm reading it. Let's go back to the home screen and to Time Machine. The next three items, that's searching my entire music library, the iPod library. So I'll tap on Take 5. That's on the Time Out uh, album, so it matches T-I-M. And again, just starts playing. So it's that easy. If you want to play some music, go right to, uh, to Spotlight, search for what you're looking for, and play it. Back here in Spotlight, you can see the next one. It found uh, a note that had TIM in it. Uh, it found two email messages. Again, I could jump right to those. And even a calendar appointment. And that is right next to your home screen, a brand new home screen to search across your phone. That is Spotlight. So, Spotlight, a single convenient place to search across your phone. We think you're going to love it. And again, these are only a few of the more than 100 new features that come as part of iPhone 3.0. There are so many more. I want to touch on a few of these because they're important. Uh, note sync. If you take notes on your iPhone, they'll now synchronize with your Mac or your PC using iTunes. Uh, shake to shuffle. We're taking a popular feature of the Nano and bringing it to the iPhone and iPod Touch. Wi-Fi auto login. This allows you to automatically log into your favorite Wi-Fi hotspot. So for instance, if you have an account at Starbucks for their Wi-Fi hotspots, when you go in, it'll automatically connect you to that Wi-Fi hotspot and you can use it. And when you leave, it'll automatically disconnect. Stereo Bluetooth. We're adding support for the A2DP profile of Bluetooth, so you can now use your stereo Bluetooth headphones and your stereo Bluetooth speakers. There's some nice additions to Safari, anti-phishing to help protect you against scams on the internet, and autofill, so it'll remember your names and passwords for the favorite websites you go to, making it easy to log in. Parental controls. We're extending parental controls to include TV shows, movies, and even applications from the App Store. Languages. We have greatly enhanced the language support by adding support for more languages and really improving the keyboards for languages around the world. And YouTube. You can now log in to your YouTube account, which allows you to share your favorites between your iPhone, your desktop, and even Apple TV. And you can also subscribe to your friends' YouTube channels right on your iPhone. So iPhone 3.0. We are so excited about this. There are incredible features for developers and for our customers. Just quickly, let me recap the, high, the big ones. In-app purchase, a new purchase model enabling things like subscriptions and additional game levels. Peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, enabling peer-to-peer -peer games and other peer-to-peer